Hey everybody, welcome to the first of several videos of this kind that I'm uh, terming a professor in the kitchen that are going to be posted to this YouTube account and linked up with your Blackboard site. Um, most of these videos I'm going to be actually posting from my home kitchen in Arizona, but right now I'm in South Georgia visiting family, so here I am in my mama's kitchen. Um, yeah, but otherwise I will be coming to you from... Scottsdale, Arizona, from my kitchen for the rest of these. Another thing that's going to be a bit different about this first video is we're going to be talking about booze. Um, usually we're going to be talking about food. Um, but in this case, we're talking about booze, so I just would like to say, as a faculty member at ASU, I in no way condone underage drinking, condone excessive drinking, and I'm merely providing you a visual here um, and a little more information that is not to be used in any uh, mischievous or bad ways, please. So, to start off, I was going to give you just a little bit more background on sort of a, a, the human history of alcohol consumption. And from there, we're going to get into these visuals about um, the, the 19th century, the early 19th century period of drinking. And I'm going to kind of show you exactly how much the different types of drinkers that you would come across during your day in the year 1800 would probably be drinking. So, uh, yeah, so to start off, humans have been consuming fermented stuff for pretty much as long as we have been walking around on two legs. Um, animals will even consume fermented things like fruit. If you want to see a really hilarious or read a really hilarious article, I think it was in Scandinavia, I'm not 100%. It may have just been in some other cold country, but uh, there's an article you can Google about a drunk moose who soberly uh, ate a bunch of, I think, apples or berries that had fallen off the plant. I think apples. They had sat on the ground and rotted and thus started to ferment and produce alcohol as a byproduct. The moose ate a whole bunch of them, got really drunk, climbed up the tree, got stuck, and then they had to call the fire department. Anyway. Uh, some hilarious photos went along with the article. But for the most part, way back 200,000 years ago, humans just couldn't eat enough fermented fruit to get intoxicated. There were not a whole bunch of intoxicated cavemen walking around, okay? Um, but they did discover that they got some euphoric feelings from eating these rotting berries. They tasted a little different than fresh berries or apples or what have you. Um, and they were also easier to digest and safer to eat in a lot of cases because we know alcohol is somewhat of a natural antiseptic in that way. Um, moving further up, we know into time, through time, we know that um, about 9,000 years ago, the first purposeful alcohol was made. Again, as far as archaeological evidence is concerned, um, it was created in China using a combination of herbs, but the base was fermented rice and honey. And so there you go. The first alcoholic beverage 9,000 years ago. Around the same time across the world and for the next couple thousand years going forward, different cultures start creating alcohol. Um, and this would time and again be because of a surplus in some kind of production of grain, barley, rice, um, in Asia, corn, in um, North and South America. So wherever there was this surplus, people are going to find fun and exciting things to do with that surplus. And in this case, it was creating booze. So you have the, the early ancestor of sake over in Asia. You have the birth of beer in the Middle East, which is then going to travel into Europe. And um, about 4,000 years ago, you were going to have... Um, wine production begin. We think it started off in the Caucasus in Georgia, the country, not the state, and it spread into the Roman Empire. And from then on, it would spread all across Europe with the Roman military. Um, so yeah, that gives you a little bit of a sense of what, uh, what and when people were doing with alcohol back prior to this time period. Um, and now we'll get into the 19th century. So there were uh, pretty much four types of drinkers that you're going to come across from 1800 to 1830 in America. And again, as I've said in lectures before, keep in mind that this is male. 
We have no idea how much slaves were drinking. We have no idea how much Native Americans or any other minorities um, were drinking. And we certainly don't know much about women. But your, your average white male in Philadelphia um, would be drinking, um, if he fell into what's called the light drinking category, he would be drinking pretty much the equivalent of this per day. This is two shots of rye whiskey. Or you can think about it, he would have been drinking yeah, two beers spread out. Usually people drink cider in the mornings. I didn't have cider. So there you go. 50% of America is not during this period, during the great American bender walking around drunk. Just keep that in mind, all right? Half the population was pretty rational about drinking. But the what gets really extreme is past that category. So you then have a quarter of Americans who fall into moderate drinkers. These are going to be people that don't just say the drinking, you know, oh, well, I have my cider in the morning because it's what you drink, or I have that one cocktail at night. No, these are people who, who have their cocktails pretty regularly, okay? And they're going to be drinking the equivalent of four shots. Four shots. Or four beers. You got breakfast. You got lunch. You got a little snack. And you got dinner. These are the moderates. All right, now we will move up to 12.5% of the American population at this time who were what you call habitual drink, habitual drink drinkers. We might label them as functional alcoholics. They, throughout their day, will have about eight shots of some sort of spirit. If they're not spirit drinkers, that's the equivalent of eight beers, which I don't even have eight beers to show you. Um... But for the most part, these people are, are, are going to have jobs. They're going to be working. Okay? These are not hardcore alcoholics. Finally, you have the what we probably would think of as alcoholics. They may not be able to hold down a job. But the last 12.5% of the population are going to be hardcore heavy drinkers. Okay? Um, these are the ones that those temperance movements were going over involving women talk about. The ones that these, these reform reformers are really targeting because this is where you get angry drunks, you get violent drunks, you get people who lose all their money and people who eventually have severe health problems from alcohol consumption. I'm not going to pour the amount of liquor into a glass because it is terrible, but heavy drinker, 12% of the population at least, was going to be having about 16 shots a day, okay? So I decided to use another example. It would be the equivalent of an entire glass of, or bottle of wine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, yes, a six pack of beer. Y'all, 12 out of every 100 Americans you would meet on the street in between 1800 and the 1830s are gonna have drank this much by the end of the day. This much, just doing their thing, walking down the street. Y'all, that ain't healthy. So, this gives you a, a real visual sense of the Great American Bender. Again, keep in mind that I, as a faculty member of ASU, cannot endorse excessive alcohol consumption. It is bad. Keep healthy, but keep it all in context. This is what people were drinking back in the day, and this is how much they were drinking, and that is crazy. So I will be seeing you again um, for another kitchen video soon, this time from my home base back in Scottsdale, Arizona. All right. See ya.